Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines. Welcome to another episode of Community Conversations in Battle Mountain. Today, I have one of my closest friends that I met in Battle Mountain from church. His name is Stephen Green. What do you think Battle Mountain means, Stephen? Hmm. Great question. Um, well, the quick and easy answer would be that it means love, but I think that falls short of a true comprehension. I mean, we throw that word around so much that depending when you say it to, it means something completely different. I mean, you, you, you say it to the wrong trucker, and, 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 and love means finding the, the, the right brothel. I mean, it, you know, let's be honest here. It, saying the word love is not very specific. So set the word itself aside and the meaning. I think what it needs is people that can care. And you say, of course care. I care. I care very much about my bank account. No, 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 no. Care. Um, point in case, actually I had this happen a little while ago. Um, I had bad day at work, my my lunch and I got separated first thing in the morning. My lunch went one way, I went the other. I didn't see my lunch bag again until the end of the day. So lunchtime comes around, I'm starving. I mean, I haven't eaten it for the last like, eight hours at this point. And two of the guys that I've worked with for a little while at that time, uh, each took a few things out of their own lunch bags and they made sure that I had enough to eat that day. And one, of course, I was tremendously grateful. They didn't have to do that. There was nothing that required them to do that. They just chose to care for someone that was in their area because they, they worked with me. They cared, you know. And I think that's so rare around here sometimes. You know, your problems are your problems. My problems are my problems. Why should I care that you don't have something to eat right now? You, you go home and get, get your own food later. Not my problem. Why isn't it? My problem. I agree. I mean, we share we share this world. We share this community together. Mm -hmm. You know, we, even if it's for a moment in a grocery store, we're in that moment a part of each other's lives. Yeah. You know, you guys in this town and at church are more family to me than my own skin or my blood. And, you know, it's, it's, it's strange, you know, we, we can change, we can change this place, we can change this world, but it, it goes with, you know, caring for each other. Mm -hmm. What, um, what are your experiences in Bound Mountain? Have you, what have you learned personally? From or about that um, To be honest with you, Battle Mountain probably never would have been my first choice for somewhere to live. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of far removed. I, I, I was raised in the Seattle area, so I'm used to, shall we say, a lot more options. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I guess what I've learned is just the value of contentment. Of okay, these are my these are the things that are available to me right now. Or if I want to go out of my way, I'll go Winnemucca. You know, these are the things that are available. And even then, that's still with those two pounds towns included, less than would be my preference. You know, because I'm greedy and you know I grew up in a city. I want more. Okay, I want all the options right now here. Instant gratification, <laughs> give me. And I guess what I've learned living here is, all right, 
if it, if it really has to be exactly the thing you want, you can wait a couple of days for it arrive by the internet. If not, then you're just going to have to learn to be happy with what's available to you. And that means Etcheberries, that means heaven help us all, the McDonald's here in town. I love my wife, she works there and that's awesome. Not my preference. But just learning to find ways to be satisfied with what's available. Um, yeah, I mean, but then it's easy to say that. <laughs> Until I wake up one morning and man, I really want some Panda Express. Okay, I want orange chicken. Give him my orange chicken. So he's starving, probably, right? I don't really. Oh know. no, he's not starving. No, I'm not starving. Physically, just, yeah, spiritually. Spiritually, maybe. Well, well, I'm hungry spiritually. I wouldn't say starving. Uh, no, I just I, I think food works really well as an example of wanting. Um, we were talking earlier in church today on a difficult issue, and. I personally feel like in my own life I've been suppressing it because I don't want to be that kind of a person. But now um, I feel like the Lord is bringing it up more and now I'm asking questions that are so basic. What, what do you think about race? Do you think that plays a difference in our American society? We've got blacks. We've got whites, we've got Hispanic, we've got some Asian. Do you think that um, we still struggle with that in our society? Um, well, I'd, I'd love to say no. I think I think that everyone's fantasy would be to say that such things simply don't have an impact on the way we live in America today and, uh, or, you know, in Battle Mountain. And I just, I just don't. It's true, unfortunately. Not that something should have an impact, because of course not. So when it comes right down to it, you believe the same color that I do. I mean, you know, I, I can think of, of nothing, I mean, absolutely nothing that would be just cause for me to think less of you because you're. Your skin color is a little different, and your bone structure is just marginally different. Like you'd have to get a professional with some very precise measuring equipment to tell the difference, and even then, he'd be guessing. Like there's just not enough difference to make the kind of judgment calls that I think people make. Um, I remember earlier you mentioned something about this preconception that a lot of White male being fundamentally. Uh, did I say white? I'm sorry. Black male. Black. I'm sorry. You know what I meant? I apologize. So that's why I'm here. And by the way, the white male in the room is fundamentally lazy. <laughs> uh, but by the way, if you're like me and you're doing a good job, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> So, this idea that the black man is fundamentally lazy, I just, I mean, one, growing up where I did, there wasn't, there wasn't near so much, I'll put that differently, there was a lot more mingling and a lot more representation of various skin colors and nationalities. Um, I mean, I remember walking into my high school lunchroom and the whole room is just this all different colors, all different nationalities, you know, and then there was the Asian quarter over there. I don't even start in that discussion. I don't know why they wanted to be alone, but apparently they did. So, and I'll tell you, I bumped up against, rubbed shoulders with, and had great conversations with people of all different races at one point or another. Um, my brother-in-law, African-American man, uh, great man of God, a counselor, He's a father, 